Yay! Tell me, is it wake up in the air? Rappers scattered off the gear. I can map him, get yeah, the air. It's like a tracker, get distracted, send him back like in the mail. Not a fraction of them real. Catch him lacking, run the drill. Run. Running through the shit like a motherfucking day. Welcome to another vlog, guys. On this episode, we're finally working on some bloody cars. Woo! Shit, eh? Who? This is what you've all been waiting for some actual car action. So, my first thing to do is make some. A bit more space. I've got to finish off doing this shit. Um, I've got a bunch of nuts and bolts that I've been organising into this um, parts bins, and that's going to just quickly tidy that up. It's going to take a while. I'm just going to do that, and then I'm going to spin both of these cars around. I'm going to put the R32 here and the S13, spin it around, back up on the hoist, and then have a look at the gearbox. Thanks for all the new subscribers, guys. Um, welcome everyone. I hope you're enjoying the content. Um, if you are, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, I would appreciate that a lot. So, plan for today is hopefully, I'm probably asking a bit, but get the gearbox out. Um, but we'll see how we go. Let's get into it. Well, that took bloody forever, but it's well organized and I'm pretty happy with it. The colors are a bit bloody all over the place, but that's right. And it's a good little workstation. Um, just got to label it and finish it off, but I'm going to start doing some shit on the 32 now. So my plan is to get it started and then drive it out here and drive it back into here instead of pushing it. Um, it did start when I first got it. I'm pretty sure if I just clean the uh, if I just clean the spark plugs and then whack them back in and hope for the best, we'll see how we go. Hopefully it starts and moves. Uh, but check out this front bumper bar, eh? Like, how's this for drift spec? Like, that is some serious zip tie work there. I've not seen that many zip tie stitching. But, um, it's another little good job I'll be doing. Is, um, a little fiberglass repair on this one. Not today, but somewhere down the line. Yeah. Yeah, let's get these two cars moved around. So I had the boys around, we, Dad was in the driver's seat and we pushed the cars out, whacked them back in there, now they're around the right way, um, because just here, if you were trying to use an engine crane, uh, it's just going to drop off and that's not going to end well. So spin them around and now we've got heaps of room and it's all working out perfect because I've got the tools set up here right next to the engine bay and then that workbench is right next to this engine bay, so I can work on both of them. But um, first priority list is to get this running so that I can actually, or me and Zara can drive it on the track. And then we have a track car again. And then this one is like next. So let's um, get this one jacked up. It's a pain in the ass because um, low cars and this type of style of hoist, I have to jack up the front and the back to get the car under the bloody hoist and then lift it up. So we might spend a little bit of time here trying to figure out the easiest, fastest way so that next time it's easier. Um, have some blocks made up and figure out some kind of way, but it looks way different with that out of the sky. A bit more airflow. And it's way lighter. Like, that blocks the light so much, eh? So, um, yeah. <coughs> oh, Corona. So Jacob's just got here, he's just unloading his cheap brand tools. Oh. Um, he's just trying to show me, like, I'm just showing him my new Makita gear. Yeah. And he reckons this this brand's good. Cheap cheap brand tools, he reckons. Yeah, what's that? Snap-on. <laughs> i never heard of it. 
<laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh shit. Just a good little joke we got going. Um, but yeah, this is happening tonight. We're gonna stay up until this is done. So the S13, the gearbox is coming out. So I have heard one of my mates, Matt from Car Make Revive, said a handy little tip that I should try is to remove the bolts um, off this part of the gearbox. Give me that light. Give me that light. It'd be good if this had a magnet on. Yeah, it'll be good, eh? Oh yeah, so Matt recommended that I take these bolts out and then lift the back half of the gearbox off. This is a T56 gearbox, so it's massive. And the hydraulic line actually goes up in, in there. So if we remove this half, then we should be able to get into that back part of the bell housing and disconnect that line. And then we can get to the bolts that are up the top because they're going to be a mission. But we'll see how we go. First things first, we just got to... Mate, can you get that light out of here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first things first, we've got to lower it back down and get take the gear knob off. Look at James at full <laughs> height. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> on the yeah, he's kneeling and I'm like, I'm standing under here. Standing like, just up fine. straight. <laughs> That's that's the benefit of being short, mate. This uh, this is the max the hoist goes. Yeah, it's right. It's got the man. handicap um, level. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, all that oil is okay. It's just coming out of the um, rocker cover. Oh. Yeah. Hopefully. But now, nah, when when we take the hoist up and then back down again, we can make it a little bit higher for you. Too easy. Or you can use that seat. <laughs> 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 you probably, it probably work. It's got a hydraulic lifter thing on it. Probably. Yeah, this is, this is the brand you want to get. It's called Makita, and um. It's called Snap On, and it's got a magnetic bottom. Hang on. Nah. <laughs> I don't. You wouldn't really want a magnet though. Wouldn't you rather just hold it with one hand? Yeah. No, that sounds awesome. Man. I've got a hook. <laughs> <laughs> just hook it up there, mate. Should be right. All right, let's um, let's get to it. Now that you got your tools here, I like the King Chrome stuff. Thanks, mate. Good, nice. And um, yeah, the 180 is just sitting in here looking all pretty, not doing anything. The old I... garage queen, mate. What is it? Garage queen. Oh, queen. Yeah, garage I, queen. I thought you said clean. Nah. And I was like, yeah, it is pretty clean in here. But yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks for fixing that up. So good. Yeah. <laughs> I um I whacked on I tried my other wheels on the front, the other white ones with the um the right offset and they hit the bloody coilovers, so it's actually the wrong offset. I don't use my oil cap. Yeah, that's off eBay. I'm not supposed to tell people that dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's an eBay one. Let's work on some cars. I've been pumped, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's like, it. Like, honestly, I haven't worked on a car in so long. Yeah, I'm Just kidding. been doing all the shed shit. Yeah. Shed shit. Sweet. Just a little update. The man, the myth, the legend. Jacob. Hey, young guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jacob from JMS Garage is here, giving me a hand. Pretty much did everything. Uh, he's taken the last bolt out. There's one more, but yeah. There's two more. Two more, but yeah. Up here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll loosen them all off. We got the, um, first time using the transmission stand, the gearbox jack. And uh, I don't have a chain yet, or I haven't mucked around with the, the mount, so we just got a ratchet strap on there. It'll do for now. Yeah. Got the drive shaft out. That's done. There was some shit bolts on the back. And you can't see anything. I need a fucking torch. <laughs> My torch went flat. <laughs> Hang on. You got to back up. Snap on, eh? That's insane. Snap on light. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow! <laughs> yeah, dude. Wow, oh, yeah, that works well. Yeah. I can see now. So we're just taking the last couple bolts out. 
Hey. Um, and then we we'll, oh, obviously the first thing we did was drop the oil out of the gearbox as well, take the gear knob off and disconnect the battery because we also took the starter motor out. And on this gearbox, the T56 gearbox, there's just two bolts underneath the starter motor and it just glides right out. Like that is a dream. The RV one's pretty shit out. Um, is that the last one? Nah, it's just that one over there. Yeah. So, we're about to find out in a minute what the go is with the clutch. You know what else you have to do? Disconnect this line, the hydraulic line. Oh, yeah. From the top. Yeah. How the heck are we going to do that? That's a good question, my friend. Should have done that first. There's also a shitload of oil leaking from the rocker cover. Uh, I have to do that at some stage. Mm. Do you reckon much will have come out of it? Oh, probably a little bit. Have a look at this. What? Safety first, people. Wait, I'm, not... <laughs> I'm using a ladder at least. I've converted James to the dark side, guys. <laughs> Don't he's, show it. He's got my Milwaukee headlamp on. And he's secretly loving it. <laughs> it actually works really good, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's really comfy. It's really bright, too. The Celastic's, like, gone in mine. Oh, true. Because it's not a Makita. Uh, yeah, right. So what are you doing there now, mate? Just disconnecting the um, gearbox. I can't reach over far enough. Um, what do you call it? The hydraulic line that goes to the gearbox. Yeah, and what is that hydro... Uh, that? What does that hydraulic line do? <laughs> it, um, so it goes from your clutch pedal to the reservoir and it holds pressure in there. And yeah. then you put the pressure on the brake, on the clutch, pumps fluid down the line, and then engages the bloody, um... Clutch slave? Yeah, but it's like built in, it's different to the RV. Oh yeah. So it's an internal slave in the gearbox? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Pretty cool. Yeah, nice. There's um, heaps of brake line fluid leaking out onto the floor. Do you yeah. reckon you could put a bucket under it? Yeah, I reckon I could do that though. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... So we're going to call it a night. Basically, we've got the gearbox to a point where we can get it back further than this and it almost comes out, but at right at the top, right at the top there, the top of the gearbox hits on the firewall and we can't get it further back. And if you go down more, the angle is just not right and it doesn't come off that spine. So what we're going to have to do tomorrow morning is lower it all back down or we'll loosen the engine mounts off lower it back down get the crane onto the engine and lift the engine up to give us more um all right so i had two options i could either um lower the car because i only got one jack i've only got that one transmission jack I sort of needed two because i need to raise the engine up to bring the engine up which would make the gearbox drop and it would get past the um, firewall so then it would have enough angle because obviously this is a lot larger engine than, than the frame was designed for the chassis so um, they've already bashed out all the firewall to fit the engine in but now trying to separate the gearbox from the engine while it's up in the air it's, it's just getting hit on the firewall so I could have raised up the engine for the gearbox to come down and then it would have enough space um, or just take the whole engine and gearbox out all in one go. So I started with, I was gonna lower the car and then use jacks and things, but I was like, why not just take the whole engine out? So and I'm gonna do a couple of things while it's out. And it's probably gonna be easier. So it took me about an hour or so and everything's disconnected. Um, now I'm just gonna, I had, it on my, I had it lower and I disconnected everything. Just brought it back up to get to the starter motor 
Um, I'm going to drop it down and then pull the engine out with the gearbox at the same time. And then have a look at the clutch. I just walked under the car for one second and got a drip on my head. One second. Is that like the time you had a bird doing its head? Yeah, that time. <laughs> that was a good time. I've disconnected everything. I just got the starter motors just sitting down in there because it doesn't come out until you lift the engine. Yeah. Um, just going to hook up the crane to it for the first time, which is exciting. Get to actually pull something out. Disconnect the. I put the gearbox back, gearbox bolts back in temporarily. So just disconnect those and then we'll just drag it out. Easy as that. So the LS1's out, finally. Took another hour, but it's out. And um, thanks to Jacob for giving me a hand. Cheers, mate. You. Um, got it out. Just got the top of the gearbox bolts off. Now I just got to undo those last bottom two, crack it open, and we'll have a look and see what the go is. But um, basically this and the top of here all hits on um, the tunnel the gearbox transmission tunnel there and it's already been bashed out to make it fit but getting the gearbox out without taking the engine out just didn't want to happen so so this is what we've ended up with and it was a pain in the ass because also this exhaust manifold here doesn't want to come out with the engine and the starter motor was like jammed in there so all right let's see what the go is with the clutch Yay! What the fuck is that? So, I finally got it bloody off, and there's some like bits of metal in there. Are they off the clutch? What is that off? Let's open it up. You guys probably know what that's off straight away, but I don't know. Holy shit. Yeah, that's off the clutch. Look at that. Fuck. The clutch isn't like melted, it's like disintegrated. Far out. Look at the um the pressure plate. It's literally like bent in here. See it from this angle. That is fucking cooked, mate. So I'll just order a new clutch and we'll be sweet. Look at that. Yeah, that's not. She's cooked, mate. She's cooked. Oh, there was one more bolt in there. Look, there was one more bolt there. And I, before, when I was trying to get this half out, just this pass, there was one bolt there. I could not get to that, eh? Now that I know it's there, it would have been probably easier. But yeah, fuck. Let's take the clutch off and have a look. It's gonna be even worse. This came out. This came out of it. That was sitting in the gearbox. That's what? the plates on the clutch. And it, it came back through. It either came out here or about there, but that's all bent in. In there. Oh, yeah. You can even see it. Yeah. She's cooked. Mm. Man, that must have been a hot eight. I don't yeah. know what that would be. I remember seeing all the sparks in, yeah, the, uh, sparks in the video. It was crazy, yeah. dude. I know. I was kind of watching just like... I was thinking like... Oh, but I was like, 
like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was too loud to say anything. Like, yeah. Just kept going. Too late. It all happened so fast. It's too late anyway. Even this is cooked, eh? She's done a good job. Yeah, nice work, Zara. Nice. Man, that's got some serious. Holy dooly. It's insane, eh? Well, that's going on the um, the old bloody memorabilia wall over there. I thought you were about to say the R32 there for a <laughs> sec. <laughs> Like surely yeah, not. Just it. Should be right. <laughs> it's going on the R32. Oh yeah. It's not that size. Direct clutch. Yeah, I'm wearing the shirt right now. <laughs> Man. RIP. Alright, so that pretty much wraps it up for today. Um, we got the engine out with the gearbox expected to clutch and it's absolutely melted um, that's sort of good it's more it's cheaper than the gearbox the gearbox is worth a lot more um, so I'll chuck another clutch in there just got to order one don't have any money at the moment so might take a little while to save because MBN's not doing very well at the moment um, the company's suffering a bit at the moment so I have to wait a bit until I can afford it but, yeah, check it out, eh? How bad is it? Like, I've never seen that before. Those plates literally got peeled off the clutch and then spun around in there. And it, they would have flicked out the top, I reckon, or about the bottom. And then came, and then bashed around in on the pressure plate for a bit. Um, yeah, not good. I've also noticed that I've got, like... Um, oil leaking from the rocker cover and it was coming out the bloody um, intake manifold as well which I don't really like to see that but I'll suss that out probably take the rockers off and have a look and see what the go is probably take the plenum off and the rocker covers and just inspect it while it's off it's easy as right now um, and it's just fun the shed's all cleaned up so it's all nice and pretty again. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for when we put the new clutch in. And then once that's done, we can finally go out to the track and actually do some more drifting, which should be, which is really exciting because it's been a long time since I've done a bloody skid. But yeah, cheers guys. Um, make sure you like the video, drop a comment, and also hit that subscribe button. Cheers guys, hope you enjoyed it, bye.